Reading to you from the 26th chapter of Acts and for the 16th verse. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of these things in which I will appear unto thee. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this is Evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic, gave my heart to Christ over 49 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. One year later, God called me to preach. Listen, friends, I've got to tell you about our service at the Jefferson County Prison uh, last Sunday. <clears throat> Quartet, my wife and I was there, and we went into the women's department. And uh, it's the best service we've ever experienced in the women's prison. The ladies all were quiet, and they listened, and 15 women come to Christ. And uh, thank you, dear ones, for listening and praying for us. Oh, it makes so much difference when people pray for these meetings. And now we've got another two prisons we're going to work on. Uh, I don't know how the God's going to work it out, but it, it would sure save us some money if we could go to two prisons in one uh, one Saturday night and one Sunday morning because we've got to stay in a motel anyway. Anyway, listen, thank you for praying for us. Kick off your slippers, sit back and relax, pour you a glass of tea or a hot cup of coffee. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? I've labeled this message, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. That's a song title. We used to sing it a lot in our churches. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Friends, Sunday night, we told those ladies about this wonderful Jesus. My wife got up and shared her testimony. She hasn't done that in a long time, but I'll guarantee you it was powerful because these girls could relate to what she was saying. And uh, there were several women came up and talked to me who had been crying. And they said, well, her one uh, lady, she was an alcoholic, and her husband's an alcoholic, and she's, he's got two children at home, and she was so troubled about it. Another woman, her mother, uh, died. And it was just a wonderful meeting. And I'll tell you, friends, when people are hurting, it's so good to be able to tell them about someone that can raise their spirits and, and heal that hurt. I love John 3.16, and you know I do, because I use it so much, and I never tire of it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, friends, God has always been on the giving end. You know, he, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And a lot of people say, well, you know, Cecil, I've heard these people say that God supplies your needs through Christ Jesus. Beloved, that's the truth. That is the honest truth. I, My family and I have lived by faith for so many years. And I'm not going to stand up here and say, Cecil Moe is a man of great faith. But I do have faith to know that God does not lie. If he says he'll do something, you can depend on it. Man won't do that. You ever watch these advertisements on television about these certain drugs? And they'll do this. But now remember, some people cannot take them. And they'll tell you that what, what causes, what the problem is. I've got a book on drugs. And I want you to know Half the drugs that they sell on TV shouldn't even be given to people. They're more dangerous than living without them. But the drug people make billions of dollars lying and deceiving people. You can't believe hardly any advertisements anymore. They say, well, this will do this. And do you try it, it won't do it. Well, anyway, 
God does not lie. And when he gave his son to the world, he gave it because he loved you and he loved me. And that's a miracle, a word that we use in prison, God's love. They made a mistake. Yes, they did. And uh, God is a God of a second chance. But he makes the rules. He tells you what you have to do. You have to repent. And that's a word that you hardly ever hear in a church service anywhere, even on radio or television, especially TBN. They don't talk repentance. They talk miracles. Oh, beloved, if you want a miracle, go out and introduce a soul to Christ. That's a miracle. Because the Bible said we were dead in trespasses and sin. And when you receive Christ, he quickens your spirit. He makes you alive. Before you meet Jesus, you're dead in trespasses. You're dead as a dog. Do you know God just reached down and took a handful of dirt and he formed man and breathed the breath of life into them and they become a living soul. And then he put Eve to, put him to sleep and took Adam's rib out and formed woman because he said it wasn't good for man to be alone. And you know what? I sure agree with him. You know, my wife and I will soon be 58 years we've been married. We've had a good life. Oh, the first 15 years of her life wasn't good because I was a stinking alcoholic. And that's why I say when you have a problem like that, take it to Jesus. Don't take it to these psychiatrists. and Don't take it to these doctors. Take it to Jesus. Oh, friends, he's the only one that can save your soul tonight. He's the only one that can deliver you from the curse of alcohol and drug addiction, sex addiction, and on and on and on. He's willing to let you, he's willing to do it for you, but you got to come to him on his terms. You remember Peter said, uh, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. See, the people had been deserting Jesus and all they were after him for is bread and uh, miracles. They didn't give a plug nickel for Jesus. And Jesus knew that. And uh, so Jesus said, well, Peter, are you going to leave me too? And Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Peter was no dummy. He was a fisherman, but he was no dummy. He knew that Jesus had the saving message. And remember in John 8, 24, it says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Friends, listen. <clears throat> believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's the, that's the, that's the ticket. It's Jesus. Oh, but you say, Cecil, I'm a member of a Roman Catholic church. Since I was a baby, I was sprinkled when I was a little baby. I go to Mass every day. I go to confession. Don't do a bit of good if you're not born again. Going to the Catholic church or any church is not going to save you. It's not going to get you into heaven. Reading this Bible won't get you to heaven if you don't repent. Turn your back on the old way of life and come to Jesus as a sinner, as a child. Now, remember when a publican and a sinner went in the temple to pray. Oh, my. This publican got up. He said, man, I give tithe of all that I have. And he went on and on and on about himself. And you know what? He said, I looked over there and he saw that little sinner boy. And he said, and boy, am I glad I'm not like him. And Jesus said he went away, the little one went away, justified because he smote his chest. And he said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. See the big shot that knew everything and did everything right. He, did, he didn't do everything right because if he did, he'd accepted Jesus. But the little sinner knew that he was a sinner. You remember the two thieves on the cross. One of them said, huh, you know, you be Jesus. You talk about being Jesus and you've healed people and you've raised people from the dead. Oh, let's see you come down off that cross. Save yourself. And the other thief said, you shut up, man. 
this man has done no wrong. He's done no wrong. We have. So he confessed that he was a sinner. Then he turned to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said, From this day forth thou shalt be with me in paradise. Didn't get baptized. Didn't join a church. Didn't take the Lord's Supper. But he went to heaven because Jesus said he would. Why? Because the man recognized he was a sinner. My dear wife didn't believe she was a sinner for a long time till she got under the gospel. And see, the Holy Spirit is the only one convict, could convict you and I of our sins. I can't convict you. I can't do it. Only the Holy Spirit can. And it tells us in Acts 4.12, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus is the only plan of salvation. He is the only door into heaven. And remember when the Bible said when Noah and his ark and after all he loaded all his animals up and his sons and his daughter-in-laws and his wife, the Bible said God closed the door. Now, they had every opportunity in the world to be saved, but they would not. They wouldn't believe the message of Noah preached for over a hundred years. And he said, repent, come come in, and there's going to be a great flood, and God's going to destroy the earth by water. But they wouldn't believe him. I'm telling you tonight that the only way you're going to get into heaven is by accepting Jesus. You can poo-poo, you can turn off the radio, you can go to bed, you can curse me, you can curse God. But if you don't accept him, you'll die and go to a burning hell. Do I take pleasure in saying that? No, sir, I don't. But that's the way it is. God doesn't send you to hell. You send yourself to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know, Paul had a message. And he said, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That was Paul's main message. Hey, Saul of Tarsus was a killer, and he let people get killed and brought people in to get killed and put them in prison, and he was really doing God a business service. He tried to stamp out Christianity, but big, it did not happen. And one day on that road to Damascus, he was going down to get some more people to kill and hurt. A great light appeared out of heaven, and he fell on his knees, and there's where he met Jesus. Friends, listen, I've told you this a million times. The morning I was saved, I was crying. I'd been drunk for weeks. I looked like hell warmed over. Wasn't shaved, dirty, unclean, no bath. You just said, surely, Cecil, you ought to go to hell. And I was headed there, just as sure as this world is round. But then I heard that message from a God-sent man. Reverend Tom Baird, and he told me about John 3.16. He told me about Nicodemus. And more than that, he kept saying, but Jesus loves you, Cecil. Hey, I'm as far down as you can get. And I mean, I, those, were, those tears came from the middle of my soul. There was no hope. It was all over. But then I heard that beautiful name, Jesus. And when I believed the message and fell upon my knees and said, Oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, I found out that he is the sweetest name ever ever sang. In all these years, I've been traveling around the country, across the sea, everywhere, telling men and women about Jesus, going into prison after prison after prison for years and years, Telling this story, seeing men and women saved every service. Last Sunday night, 15 women came to Jesus. Today we're down at uh, uh, Ordway. And we're on the way back to now, today, from a trip down there. We have got an opportunity. I got a call from a, one of the big shots in our prison ministries. He said, Cecil, would it be possible for you and your quartet to come down here on a Saturday night 
hold a service at six between six and nine o'clock. And uh, we don't have any chaplains. We don't have anybody that cares for these men. And then we can go back to the motel, stay all night, get up at six or five in the morning, get ready to go to Ordway or go to uh, Los Animas and preach there, share Christ, and then come on back to Denver. See, we could save a lot of money. And we're running out. I mean, our ministry just doesn't have it anymore. But we know that God is pleased with it, and we know God will supply the needs. Some of you faithful, precious saints of God, oh, you don't know what it means to us to know that someone is going to stand with us and someone's going to pray for us. That prayer is so important because without it, we can't do much. And if I didn't have the New Grace Quartet, it wouldn't be very much. They are such a blessing. Those men and women love them to death. And when men and women come up and tell us that we that they'd been saved on one of our services, you don't know what it does for me. Now, Jesus saves, and all that I do is just share from my heart to their heart that Jesus Christ is the only Savior, and he is the sweetest name that I've ever heard of or ever known. And you know what, friends? The Lord will receive outcasts. You remember the lepers and the harlots and the sinful woman and the dying thief and the excommunicated blind man, despised sinner. God doesn't care what you are, doesn't care what you've done, but are you willing to come to him and become as a little child and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Oh, friends, that's... And you know what? You cannot experience the abundant life if you got your hand in a cookie jar and you're a selfish person. God doesn't like that selfishness in people. No, he does not. I don't care what you say. He said it's more blessed to give and receive. That's what he said. And I sure believe it because I practice it and it works. But introducing souls to Christ and witnessing is a joy that very few people have anymore. In Daniel 12, 3, it says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness uh, as the stars forever and forever. Oh, friends, soul winning is a joy of every, should be a joy of every Christian. Witnessing, because there's so many hurting people in the world. Think about all of our servicemen and women overseas being picked off every day, four and five those insane people over there, and a lot of them are religionists, Muslims and whatever they are, and they say their God says to stamp out all of us Americans, all of uh, all the Jews. Well, do you know that they don't serve a living God? Allah's not a living God. There's only one God. There's only one Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Now, you say, well, Cecil, let me tell you what. I really, 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 really want to be a better Christian. I want to be a better person. Tonight, I'd like to make that plain to him. Well, if you do, bow your head and tell the Lord that you know you haven't been doing right and you're confessing your sins and and you want to be used of the Lord. He'll do it. If you're listening tonight and you're unsaved and the Spirit of God is tugging at your heart and you want to trust Jesus... Here's a prayer that will change your life for time and eternity and will assure you a place in glory. And here's how the prayer goes. Dear Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. I'm turning my back on the old way of life, Lord, and I'm receiving you as my personal Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you get on the phone and you call 303-471-8534. 303-471-8534. I'll not use your name on the air. I won't sit down and write and ask you for any money. I don't care where you go to church. But, oh, beloved, I'm concerned where you spend eternity. You know, friends, this might be the last time that God's Holy Spirit will ever tug at your heart again. I urge you. The Bible said, He that's hardened his heart, Harden his neck shall be destroyed, and that suddenly without a remedy. Come to Jesus tonight. 
If you believe I can help you spiritually, get on the phone and call me at 303-471-8534. I need to give him my mailing address, which is 9621 uh, South Burberry Lane, Highlands Ranch, 80129. Friends, I uh, want you to know that we're, uh, this is the last of October, so we've got just November and part of December for our Christmas baskets. We're going to, I was not going to do it again this year, but I, we've done it so for so many years. I just hate to quit it because there are so many hungry families out there. Uh, we can't do what the Salvation Army does because they've got Channel 4, 7, and 9 behind them, but we can do what we can do. And uh, so you start making a matter of prayer what you want to do. And if you started sending in early, be sure and mark on your check of money or Christmas. See, and the uh, Angel Tree is an organization 
that gives Christmas presents to inmates' children. Now, I work with an associate pastor of the large church that they're going to take care of the presents, and we're going to deliver the presents with the groceries. So, uh, and do if do pray about our prison ministries <clears throat> because we're getting more busy and more more expense. I hate to tell you that, but it's a truth. We do have a lot more expense now. But pray about it for us, because some of you dear ones cannot give, but you sure can pray. And I'm telling you, we're all on the team. There's no big shots. I have no corporation backing us up. No church is backing us up. We have to do what God's people are helping us do. So pray about it, and we'll be so thankful for it. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this time together with our listening friends and family. Lord, it's been over 30 years we've been on this broadcast, and we're so thankful for that opportunity that Dr. D gave me a long time ago. Father, I pray for our country and our president, and I pray, Lord, they catch Hossein and, and uh, this other guy, uh, because, Lord, they're the cause of so much trouble, and all these countries are having uh, sending in people to kill our, our men. Lord, protect our men and women, please. Lord, I do pray for our Mary listening family and for those who have stood with us through the years, how we ask your richest blessing upon them. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Well, friends, for the past 29 minutes, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Moe. Thank you, dear ones, for listening tonight. Oh, I pray that you'll stand with us through our prison ministries and through our Christmas baskets. And I don't want to give either one of them up because they're so important. We're seeing hundreds and hundreds of people saved over the year, over the year, every year. And we're thankful for the Lord for allowing us this privilege, and it is a privilege to serve him in prison. Till this time next Sunday night, I want you to be good. Your neighbors stay sweet. Keep looking up. This wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night, and may God bless you real, real good. <laughs>